not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer that beats the air. No, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified from the prize. So in the context of, of the passage, he is talking about the necessity of um, living for Christ in such a way that he, he is not just following after his passions, but that battle within himself and that struggle to, to, to fight his own desires and stuff and, and, he, and to, you know, that, that work needed. It, it is, uh, he sees it uh, as necessary in order for him to reach the prize. And so he's prize focused. And uh, like I said before, I think that is something that we are not often from moment to moment really being engaged in, right? We are reactive. More often than not. And what we need to be is proactive by keeping the prize in mind. In uh, Paul's writing, when he talks about the discipline of God, right? He says, you know, um, to consider trials as God uh, disciplining us. And discipline is not uh, enjoyable at the time, but it produces a harvest of righteousness, right? So we should be focused on the harvest of righteousness. Even as a parent, disciplining your own kids is, is a hard thing to do. Dis disciplinary action within the church as a pastor, hard thing to do. Disciplinary actions within, the, uh, within a, a business or within a, uh, an organization, hard things to do. But if, they do, if you do them well, pay attention to this, it will produce a... Right? It will produce what? It will produce a, a, a reward of righteousness. It will, re it will produce righteousness. And therefore... We need to have that prize as our goal. We need to have that understanding that, okay, we're doing this now. It's going to take work. It's going to be hard. It's going to be messy. But there's a goal that is worth this. And so then we end up engaging a little bit more proactively in terms of what we want the future to be like rather than just engaging in the next problem, the next problem, the next problem, getting caught up in being a Mr. Fix-It type leader. Great leaders are focused on the future, and they are proactive to make the desired future happen. They don't just simply focus on the problem, but they look to solve the problem in the direction of their desired future. They, 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 in, their, in, their pro, in the direction of achieving their prize. Okay, And so we need to be engaged in that. Uh, one, of the, uh, one of the tools that I think are really, really... It's just like absolutely so important, uh, so good, so valuable, uh, is uh, this book right here. It's called The Four Disciplines of Execution. I've talked about this a little bit before in the past. I just want to spend a, just a smidge of time talking about this right now. And, uh, and uh, I, I want to point out four things that I think are just so valuable that you get from this book, okay? I mean, the truth is it's found a little bit of, of what's talked about here. Some of the same truths and stuff are talked about in these other bo books. Uh, but this one here, it just it outlines a kind of a, uh, a, a system of execution that really allows a person to be a, a lot more kind of proactive in trying to reach their goal and trying to reach the prize and how to do that really well. And so that's called the four, the four Disciplines of Execution. And I would recommend that you buy this. I'm just going to talk about uh, and give it, I mean, it, it doesn't benefit me at all. You don't have to buy it. I would buy it so that you can write in it, right? So because I like, this is, this is the act of reading here, okay? I love reading through and marking and writing and highlighting the things that I think are most important, okay? That's why, and then I write all those little important things on the front or the back cover so that I remember because my mind is pretty uh, rough. But um, I would encourage you to read this book and take notes and, 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 and kind of be, it, it, it helps in a big way to become more proactive rather than reactive uh, in, in how you lead. One of the first things that he talks about, which I think is so important, is the idea of being, as the idea of having, um, like in terms of measures, okay? And he, he calls them, to, uh, he, he, specifically having lead measures rather than leg measures, okay? So lead rather than leg, and I'll explain those to you, okay? 
Now, one of the, when we're kind of in the mindset of just responding to the next issue, okay, having leg measures is so important, but often doesn't actually allow us to really start to shape our future, to be proactive towards our goal. And this is what, this is how they define lead measures and, and leg measures. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to attempt to do it. They do a great job in the, in the book, but I'm going to try to do it as quickly as possible. So your leg measures are, basically they lag behind. So this would be like, uh, if you have a goal, you know, at the start of the year, this year, guys, let's make sure that we're doing, you know, we're, we're adding more purple to, to uh, everyone's day, okay? So let's, let's say that. I mean, it's, I don't know what it is. Whatever the goal might be. Then at the end of the year, we do an evaluation, right? We do an evaluation and we evaluate everyone that has come to our church. Or we uh, just kind of sit down with our, with our husband or with our wife. And, and, and we just say, okay, so how do you feel like we did this year? Okay, so at the end of the year, we do an evaluation. That's a lag measure, meaning you do the measure, but it lags behind the, um, you know, it, it, it lags behind your ability to do something about it, okay? So let's say this is one year, okay? And so this is your goal, more... Purple, okay, more purple. You get to the end of the year and you ask your kids or you ask the people in your organization, you know, did we add more purple in this year? And they go, hmm, no, no, a little, no, okay? So you think, okay guys, we didn't really do it this year. So, you know, next year, Let's try to do it better. So now you have these results and that's really good. And you can make a change for next year. But this year's already gone. You can't do anything about that. Now a lead measure, a lead measure does something different. It would say you have 12 months, right? 12 months in a year. You do an evaluation here. So you do a measure, an evaluation, you measure at your first, or at your first, at the end of the first month. And then if there's no, right, no, no, little, no, then you make changes here, right? Then your measures allowed you to lead what you do next so that at the end of the year, your lead measures... Your lead measures allow you to influence your lag measures, right? So that if you do this here and it's no, then you do another evaluation here, right? You do another one a month later, and it's yes, no, little, no, no, right? Well, you've done a little better, right? You've done a little, if you were here, here you've done a little better. Then you do another evaluation, and you do another evaluation, and you make change, change, change. You're changing things as you go, so that as the, each month goes by, you can eval, you're taking basically this evaluation, and you're bringing it into each month, or even each week. And I think even each week is better, right? So you had lead goals, lead, or lead measures, and, and they really kind of engage in your lead or leg goals, right? Where your goal is like way at the end, and you're going to be like, okay, hey, I'm going to make the goal here, and I'm going to evaluate it here, okay? The problem is that in between here and here, that once you're here, you can't go back. This idea, in terms of lead measures, is that you can, they can lead you into doing what you need to do so that each month or each week even, you can get better and better and better so that when you get to your leg measure at the end of the year, you're like, yes, 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 yes. And you know why you're yes, 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 yes? Because you've made the changes that you would have made here at the end of the year, you've made them here at the end of January. So that February, you're going to be a little bit more intentional. And then at the end of February, 
At the beginning of March, you're like, no, what we did in February wasn't enough. It's still, it's still yes, but there's still no little no. So no, we want yes, yes, yes at the end of the year. So what do we change? And we do a little more change. And we do a little more change. And finally, if you get yes here, you know, four months in, you get four yeses. Right? Then you're like, okay, let's keep doing that. And then here it's a no again. You get one no. Okay, what are we... What are we doing here that's right that we, so you can, a lead measure allows you to make changes so that you're more intentional on being, this is basically, guys, being proactive, and this is being reactive. Okay, we didn't do it last week, last year, so let's make some changes for next year. But this is allowing us to be no in right now before we get to the end of the year. How can we make changes today? How we can we change changes tomorrow? How can I be proactive today? If you only do measures at the end of the year, they're light measures. If you only do uh, a measurement at the end of every five years, that's a lag measure. 